with this fight, like, what do you feel like should happen next in, in your opinion? Uh, I, I know there's a, a signed rematch uh, for them, though the way I, I believe is going to be at 154, but just overall, like the aftermath of all this, like wh wh where do you think both Crawford and Spence should go after this? Well, I think they should do the rematch. I, I think that uh, uh, since they signed it, uh, they should abide by it, uh, one. And two, uh, if Spence had gotten beat, and he was a hundred percent to a lot of us that uh, that that watch watch him fight, then okay, maybe then I would say no, let's uh, go on to something else. But I don't think Spence was all there, uh, so I think it, I think a rematch should be done. Um, and if he beats him at one hundred fifty four, then really there's no excuse unless he killed himself to make weight again, which he shouldn't do. Uh, but then the, these guys sometimes are a little crazy uh, how they lose their weight. Um, but I I do think a rematch is is in order. How, how different does the rematch look then it, with him at 154 and, and not having to cut that weight? It's, well, he still hadn't cut weight because I'm sure he's not going to be 154 when, uh, when he starts. But uh, as uh, a lot of us have mentioned and, and, some, and as you mentioned, uh, other coaches have said he wasn't right. Um, if, he did, if Spence and Derek don't learn from this lesson, then you know, there's nothing you can say. If he gets beat again the same way, then Terrence is a real special talent. Yeah, you know, uh, well, uh, a lot of people have said, hey, look, it, same thing happens. Like, Terrence is just that that good, it, you know, regardless of, of what you think of the weight. You know, Spence was in the fight, and it just was a different level that Crawford showed up with. Well, I hope it's that's not coaches saying it, because if it's a coach, he doesn't know nothing about the, about the game. There may be fans that are saying that, mm. but coaches know. I mean, uh, coaches know the troubles and the, and the issues that we go through trying to get a fighter down to a particular weight. Uh Maybe he started out too high and it took him too long to, to or, or he didn't do it quick enough uh, to get down to a respectable level so that he wouldn't have a difficult time the last couple of weeks. So there's a lot of there's a lot of issues that a lot of people don't know that, that happen in camp. And um, like I said, if Derek and, and, and Errol don't learn from this valuable lesson, then they deserve whatever they get. Dang. So, so you're convinced that he wasn't right for the fight. Oh, he definitely wasn't right. Uh, you just just look at him. Look at his eyes going into the fight, man. He looked like he was loaded. You know, that just fatigue. That just uh, the body just don't want to be there. I mean, he's uh, there's no way you can recuperate in those uh, from the time they weighed in to now to the fight night. Uh, in the, yeah, he's gonna get a lot of food in him. He's gonna look at a, a lot of liquids in him, but he's still drained. He's still he still killed himself to make weight. And, and, and to me, it was obvious. I didn't see the press conference, but somebody told me that at the press conference, he looked like a, like a skeleton. I, I don't know if that's true, but is, is that true? Did you see this at the press conference? Well, that, yeah, no, I, I, I was there at the post fight press conference. Um, no, 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 the, 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 the prior press conference. Oh, no, 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 no. The, 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 yeah, no, I was there too. I talked to him at the, the final press conference and, and yeah, he, he looked like he was cutting. He, to be honest, he, yeah, he looked like a cut. Like I, I don't know if it was close to like when Devin Haney cut uh, for his second Cambosis fight. He looked really sunken in, but he looked like he was going through a, a weight cut, uh, a rough one. And you see a different guy uh, um, fight night. I mean, that's that's not the same guy you were talking to before on Wednesday or Tuesday, whenever that press conference was. So uh, to me, that could have been one of the issues. Uh, the other issue is that he had a great fighter in front of him. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I don't, like I've been going with, you know, everybody that I talk to, you know, and they, they either bring that up or, or Crawford, but, you know, I, I think uh, also too, like what I don't want to get lost in all this is how great of a fighter Crawford is, or like kind of like dismiss like his abilities and, and how good he is with that, even though, you know, it, it's up to whoever's watching this to kind of make their conclusion as to what they feel about what happened. Uh, but given that, how long should he wait? Like you're a coach, you know, you know, you've been with fighters that have cut a lot of weight and, you know, should he go into an immediate rematch? Should he wait a long time and then go into like a, a feel out fight at 54 and then go into the rematch? Like, what do you think, Abel? From what I've heard, uh, I guess the rematch is supposed to happen in December. Uh, if it was me, uh, I wait until maybe March or April. Uh, let him um, let him put this behind him and, and let him uh, start from scratch maybe three or four months before the date. But uh, I uh, I spoke with Derek, uh, not in words, but uh, in text, and he did tell me that they were talking about December. So um, I hope they wait a little bit. 
like I said, March, April would be best for me uh, as far as I'm concerned. Just give them a little time, a little more time. Mm. What'd you guys talk about? I uh, just, uh, I would just tell them to just, uh, you know, we all have those days, man. We all, yeah. have, every, everybody that's in this business as a coach and as a manager and as a fighter has gone through those days where it just, nothing was right. Nothing was right. There's nothing that uh, Derek could have said in a corner. There's nothing that Derek could have done. Uh, it was all, to me, it was lost prior to the fight. Uh, so um, just to keep his chin up and he's got some great fighters under him. He's a good coach. Uh, he's going to be a great coach eventually when the time comes. Uh, but for right now, just keep your chin up and and let's go get a let's go get some because there's great ones out there coming. You know, th there was a re there's a rematch clause um, in the the contract. I, I believe it. If it does happen, it's going to go up to 154. What are your thoughts, uh, Kenny, on a, a rematch happening between the two, given the result we saw uh, with them in the first fight? Well, you know, from a personal standpoint, there's the personal. And then there's the business side of it. From the personal standpoint, personally, that's not a fight I want to see Errol in again. Just me personally. From the business standpoint, I would love to see him in that fight. And I know he's got a chance, not a chance. I know he will do better than in the first fight. But I just felt that... Um, a lot of the things that happened to him in that fight will change the way that he approaches boxing now. And it'll change the way that um, his trainer has to approach it. It's going to change the way people close to him perceive what they're looking at in him. They're going to have to look at things closer. You have no choice but to, you know, be concerned because he took a lot of shots in that fight and a lot of the the punches were flush they were solid they were you know it wasn't a lot of shots where you saw him pair them or block them off they were you know flush shots so you have to be aware at least i would of everything from this point on moving forward you have to look at everything you know and not to minimize or take away from his effort. His effort was unbelievable. Errol's effort never quit, never stopped, never back up, never, you know, he came forward the whole entire fight. He just ran up against a better man that night and moving forward, me personally, I wouldn't want to see that. If he decides to go for that and they make that fight at 154, you know, I know he's going to do better, and he's he, he he believes in himself. He's a he's a warrior. He believes in himself, and he believes he can beat Terrence. And I believe that you know that opportunity should be there for him, if everything else is in place. You know, in terms of his health, if there's nothing coming from this last fight coming into the next one that backs that up, because we don't know, and I know. We don't know exactly what happened that night, but I know from being in those lockers, from being in those dressing rooms, that after these fights over, you know, guys will have to be seen by doctors, not just on site, but they'll go to the hospital. You know, and I've seen guys win fights. They're the victorious guy. They're the guy, their hands are raised and they're still going to the hospital. I just spoke to uh, Virgil Hunter, actually, and uh, he kind of shared the same opinion that what you expressed, like, hey, I would I would wait. I would uh, the rematch shouldn't happen this year. Uh, I would get yeah. checked out, get every single battery of tests to just make sure, because if you go into this other fight, you know, some some bad stuff could happen if there is something wrong and you don't get it checked out. Definitely not this year. This year to me is it's over with. This is the end of the year. It's the, the year ended. 2022 ended that night um, for actually, even for the guy that won the fight, even for the guy that won the fight, because his preparation for this fight, in order for him to perform at the level that he performed at, he had to put everything into it. And he now needs some time to recover from that as well. You know, physically, I think um, Terrence was fine. I didn't think that he took any 
punishment or any shots that I thought, man, Terrence might have got rock right there. I didn't think that at all. But there's an emotional component to this. There's a mental component to this. There's other things that are no longer in balance. You need physical balance, mental balance, emotional balance, nutritional balance, um, spiritual balance. Let's talk about the nutritional balance just for a moment. If either guy, not to saying that one or the other, but both guys came into this fight having to lose weight, having to monitor how they lost the weight, having to try to maintain strength at the same time of losing weight. And if there was anything that was taken away from them in losing the weight and not being able to maintain the strength, and then there's also the hydration that needs to be maintained, right? And so, oh, I'm hydrating and the weight is going up. So now I got to stop hydrating as much, right? But I'm losing my strength too, right? And so we're not firing on all cylinders, so to speak, going into this fight. Well, after this is over with, you, you're the victor, but you need to recover from that as well because you really depleted your body to prepare and then you put depleted your body in the match. So Terrence being victorious, I'm quite sure it's still there was an area in his, in his body that he gave a lot of himself that he needs to recover from as well, emotionally, mentally, you know, He's got a family he wants to go back and just relax and be with. So I, I'm pretty sure the year is over with for him as well. You know, I, I've, uh, as I always do, you know, I always go on social, see what fans are saying, uh, don't necessarily agree with a lot of stuff uh, fans say on, on social. Uh, but you as a trainer, I feel you you bring uh, good insight on this. Uh, you know, a lot of people are criticizing Derek. I feel unfairly, but you know, uh, for, I, I guess, the plan coming into the fight. What, what do you make of all that? I don't know what the plan was. Um, I, I say this about all coaches, all trainers. I don't criticize any of them. Um, they all have the same mindset. They want their guys to win. They want their guys to be successful. Whatever that coach is thinking, whatever his game plan is coming into a fight to try to win a fight. He put 100% into it to try to make sure that his fighter was successful. He went up against something that he hadn't seen from his fighter before as well. And, it, you know, for lack of words, he wasn't prepared for that. But that's not me being, you know, criticizing him, but he wasn't prepared for that. Um, I don't know what they're saying because I don't read it. I haven't read it. It's not something I like to do. Um, I don't like to see uh, either guy, uh, the trainer or the fighter, put down because they put everything into this, everything that they have, their whole life, everything on the line. They 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 fight for their families. They fight for their life. They fight for you know their physical well being. <laughs> you know you you're literally fighting to protect your life in that ring. Someone's trying to, if they can, incapacitate you, take you out, hurt you as badly as you can, stop you completely, immobilize you. So you're fighting to protect yourself from that, and you're trying to do the same thing to them. So I don't know what the game plan was. Um, you know, I do have some thoughts on how long uh, the punishment uh, that that uh, Bud was handing out, how long that lasted. I think that in my eyes, me personally, that lasted too long. I think I, I, I know without a doubt that I wouldn't have let it go that far. It's not yeah. necessary. After the, point, I don't, the fourth or the after the, the two knockdowns in the round, right? Is that around when you would have stopped it in your opinion? Well, definitely there. But I'm I'm saying like in, in after six rounds in, in into a fight and you haven't won them, there's no way you can come back on these scores. Scorecards, you can't come back. You need you you know you need a knockout to come back and it you you have a trained eye as a trainer that you can see your guy is not going to be able to come back from this he's down too far on the cards 
He doesn't have the pop on the punch. He's not able to hit this guy with anything substantial to, to change the direction of this fight. So as each round goes on, he's just taking more and more punishment. And uh, I would have definitely said, you know, that's enough, son. We had enough. That's it. We're done. They've talking about a, a rematch uh, taking place at 154 pounds. In your opinion, as fighter and, and coach, should they do that? How does that look? As a coach, I want to let Earl go get everything checked out and make sure he's neurologically okay. If his mind, everything's okay and his body's okay, then we'll consider a fight at 154. But we need some time to make some adjustments because we haven't been forced to make adjustments in our career. So to make adjustments means that we got to go take some time and work on doing different things. And truthfully speaking, we should sign a rematch clause, but tell them let us have one or two fights between to get ourselves right for that rematch. You understand me? So if we can work, get us a couple of fights in, that we can work on our other tools in our box that we haven't used or had to use, this gives, this gives us a chance to come back and fight a much better fight. Secondly, we don't have to pull ourselves down so far and wait at 154. So maybe we won't be as sluggish with the weight. You understand me? Because we know Earl been killing himself for years now to make 47. Last but not least, um, like I said, to me, the, the, the way we go into the fight, it has to be different. You know, you have to come in the fight with, with, a, with a mindset of we are pound for pound one of the best, but we're also fighting pound for pound one of the best. When you know that, that changes the whole landscape. Does it look any different, in your opinion, at 54, given Crawford's skills? The weight, the weight is not what's going to make it look different. That's why I told you all those three things. All of those things have to take place. If he just goes in and fights Bud again the way he is now, he can fight him at 54, he can fight him at 65, none of that would matter. Um, I'm a guy that says it with great confidence because I know I fought from opponents at 153 to opponents to 226. Before I lost the weight going back down, it didn't matter who you put in front of me, they weren't winning. Um, so with Bud not ever having that drastic weight loss, never having him going through no drastic car accident like, or nothing like that, anybody you put in front of him, he going to take him apart. The rematch, uh, I would imagine, is going to take place at 154. Because it's 154, and if Errol takes a, you know, a good amount of time to heal up, get better uh, from this fight, give it give his body a chance to rest. He doesn't have to cut down a, a, as much. You said you don't think it looks any different? No, because I think mentally uh, Bud Crawford has him now. Mentally, Bud Crawford won. Cause, but it wasn't a close fight. It wasn't It wasn't nothing that, oh, give and take or, oh, you know. No, he walked through him. He destroyed him. He dismantled him. He obliviated him. Every, every adjective you want to use. So what's going to be different? Errol's also going to get smarter. He's going to get better. No. You know, you know what the difference between 147 and 154 is? Two glasses of water. Now, if you have a hard time making 47, those two glasses of water mean everything. But that doesn't mean it's going to change how you look in a fight as much, you know, so much. I mean, he had nothing for Bud Crawford. He, no, there's no game plan. And that's the other thing. You got you got the, the fighter of the year, Derek James. The, I mean, the, fight, the manager, trainer of the year. Trainer of the year. I didn't hear it because, you know, I had friends over and we were watching. And I'm sure he's giving him some, uh, you know, direction. But obviously none of it worked or he didn't listen because he was doing the same thing over, round after round after round. And he just, this guy was walking into everything. He couldn't get away with a punch. And when he got dropped that second round, which was a flat, you know, not a flash knockdown, but, you know, he got that, you know, boom right in, that stiff jab, knocked him behind. He got up. I think the fight was over from then, right that point on. I think he knew he didn't have it. I think Bud Crawford's confidence just grew by leaps and bounds. And after that, he just he started walking through. He walked Errol, uh, Errol down, and every punch he threw, he caught and he countered. Errol had nothing for him. So, uh, and his face started blowing up. I mean, I never saw Errol get his face blow up like that. Get busted up like that, so uh, yeah, it's a different feeling when you get busted up and t start tasting your own blood and things like that. So it's a different mindset. So I don't see anything different that Arrow could do against Bud Crawford. I really don't. Given 
how this first fight played out. Should they rematch, in your opinion, Virgil? Oh, boy. Um, looking at it from the fighter's perspective, I think a rematch is in order. The fighter wants it. Um, again, it's like I said in the first interview I did, and uh, uh, Roy Jones did an interview a couple of days ago, but I had said it before, getting thrown out of a car like that. Not only did you get thrown out of the car going over 100 miles an hour, you were intoxicated. So that's a double whammy. That right there is like a running back taking 10 years of all pro linebacker hits 15 to 20 times a game. The collision, just that one situation that traumatized you like that. I don't know how long was he in a coma? Oh, I don't know, to be honest. I think when it was a coma, few days. When I had that health scare, I was in a coma. Mm -hmm. And a coma takes a lot out of you. It took me a year to get right, to get my sense of, and I wasn't in a wreck. I wasn't traumatized physically to get my balance and my, and, and my sense of balance right and everything right, just coming out of a coma. And the doctors told me that. I had to learn how to walk again being in a coma seven, eight days. That's what it takes out of you. You got to learn how to walk again. So to be in a coma, didn't have the reconstructive surgery. I was just shocked at the color of his face and the fact that he was bleeding from his nose, but the blood wasn't running. He was bleeding from his eye, but the blood wasn't running. He was bleeding from his mouth, but his lips puffed up instead of the blood running. It was like it was just clotting, like there was a normal blood flow passages in his face. I don't know. Did he have reconstructive surgery on his face? I, I believe so. He did. So you got to look at that situation because of the way he puffed up. So those are concerns. Those are medical concerns to me. Then on top of the trauma of the wreck and then all the training for the next two fights to sparn. I heard that he spars 15 rounds and things like even if he had a headgear on you sparring those many rounds, even if you're blocking the punches and they hitting you, sparring those many rounds, coming off of that type of trauma and then getting hit with those type of shots. Uh, if it was me, I wouldn't, if he was my guy, I would tell him, look, this is what you possibly could face. You could end up shuffling the rest of your life. But I can't make a decision for you. All I could do is give you the best advice, seek the best advice, seek the best ways to figure out that this doesn't happen again. There's definitely got to be some changes made. We can't go in the same way, but give yourself time. Do not jump back into that fight this year. Give yourself time. If you need to stay in condition, you could come to the gym after a couple of months and, and stay in shape. You can box four or five rounds with a guy, then maybe we'll get a guy in there and simulate a fight with regular uh, fight gloves on for four or six rounds, simulate a fight and things like that. But do not go back in there this year. That's what I would recommend. But does it, I? Yeah. Does it look any different at 154 in your honest opinion? It's hard to predict. You can only predict it after the fight is over. It, I, I'm not wanting to predict the future. I'm sure he'll feel much better at 54. I'm sure he'll feel much better at 54. But I think that he has to consider when to grind and when not to grind. And to trust his body and to trust, get with the dietitian on the days that you rest. It took a long time for me to convince Andre that you have to rest. What happens is they start feeling real good. So now they want to go, go, go. So they leave it in the gym. Once you start feeling good, you got to keep it right there. Once I run, once I run a hill, a four mile hill in 25 minutes, I don't go to a six mile hill. Let me run the four mile hill in 24 minutes. Then let me run the four mile hill in 21 minutes. 
That lets me know I'm getting in better shape. I don't increase the mileage. I reduce the time. So on the days that he rests, you got to rest, man. You have to rest. You just can't grind, 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 grind. And um, running all these miles every day and things like that. Once you're in condition, you get the rest of the conditioning by resting. You get the rest of the condition by rest. You don't increase the mileage. You reduce the time. And so all those things that I, I would try to put into him to consider, um, be real thoughtful about it. Don't let ego and pride get in the way. Pride comes before the fall. But only he knows how he felt. Only he knows and can play the fight back through his mind. Nobody else could do it for him. He was in there. He can play the fight back in his mind. He knows what, what goes on. So right now, it's definitely pride talking, but he has to settle down and let reasoning come into the equation. He has to let common sense come into the equation. Look, you're going to be a Hall of Famer, son. I believe that. You don't have nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing to be ashamed of. But at the same time, you have children that depend on you. You, you should do okay this fight. You should be fine for life and things like that. You have to think about your health. You have to think about what you've been through. You have to think about all the things that even before the accident, he admitted to me one time that he wasn't living the, the, the best lifestyle. Um, and then that that wasn't a big secret in the boxing world. This, this is irreversible damage. I had an old trainer tell me once that drinking is worse than cocaine for a fighter. And I used to warn Adrian about it and things like that. It, it don't take long, man. It's irreversible damage to your organs. And when your organs are damaged, your blood flows right. When it's gone, you're not getting it back. It's not coming back. You hear old fighters say, I'm in the best condition in my life at 36. No, you're in the best condition a 36-year-old can get into. You're not in the best condition a 22-year-old gonna get into. So don't kid yourself. But I think right now, and I understand, I would probably feel the same way. My Pride would be bruised. My ego would be bruised. I had to eat my words. This happened in front of the world. It's not an easy thing to live with. But if Errol can hear what I'm saying, it's okay. It's okay. Five years from now, only boxing people will be talking about it. But you will be remembered as a great fighter and a great champion. And so that's nothing to be ashamed of. In this sport, it's going to always be somebody come along better than you. If Crawford hang around too long, it'll happen to him. So it, um, I just want him to give himself time to reason, be very reasonable, to look at your children. Go to the neurologist. Go to the doctor. Get the honest opinion. Don't get the opinion that you want to hear. Get the honest opinion from two or three of them, tell them, look, don't tell me what I want to hear. Tell me the truth. And if they all telling you the same thing and you're willing to gamble on your health and you're willing to gamble on your life because of pride, um, then, you know, I, there's nothing I can tell you. I'm just being very concerned about an older man that'd be 70 years old in November. Um, it takes skills to get old. You don't get old being foolish. It takes skills to get old. Pride don't get you old. Pride will get you killed. There's a lot of people in the graveyard would come up and they could talk to you, tell you, if I didn't let pride get in the way, I'd still be here. Wow. So, wow. you know, he could be one fight away from permanent damage. We don't know how much damage this fight has done. What we see on the face is a lot more going on the inside. He has to pay attention. His parents has to pay attention to his speech patterns, his walk patterns, his reactive patterns. He he needs to be tested neurology, neuro, neurologically. He needs to be tested. He needs to go through a battery of tests, brain scans, things like that. He needs to cover all the bases. Don't play with your health. Don't play with your life. You got a full life ahead of you. When you got into this business, you knew it was a short career. 
You knew it was a dangerous career. It's a career that people have died in. Don't let that one punch, let your head hit that canvas and bounce off that canvas and there you go with a brain bleed because you were in a serious wreck and you don't know that one punch in the right place could give you that brain bleed. So you don't know the effects that you will be feeling in the next two months from this. I'm sure if he's honest with himself, he's feeling the effects of that fight right now. So, Errol, if you hear me, please cover all the bases. Be, don't look for that fight this year. And, and I'm not overruling Derek or anybody else or your parents or anybody else. I'm just saying to you from somebody who's been on this earth for a while and who's overcome a health scare himself, uh, I know what it's like being in a coma. Um, please. Don't skip no corners. Don't let pride get in the way of you living a long and productive and fruitful life. That's what I have to say.